Hi there! I would like to show you a really nice project that I have found out recently. It is for the simulation of the industrial processes, especially the material handling. It is based on the Godot game engine and it is an open source. First of all, you have to download it from the GitHub repository. It is called Open Industry Project. If you scroll down, there's a description of it. You can see that it supports the OPC UA, Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP. We are going to use the OPC UA today to connect to it. Here is a demo example. And what is important is that you will need the .NET SDK to be installed. Let's go to the releases and download the latest one. All you have to do is just download the zip project. I have it already downloaded on my desktop and I will unzip it here. The next, we just have to open the directory and open the industry project. There's already a default project available, which I'm going to open now. Here we can see that we are inside the building. Using the right mouse button, it is possible to rotate the camera. Shift and middle mouse button, you can pan the screen. At the bottom, there is a parts tab where we can see all of the parts that are being available right now. Now for the test, I'm going to add the belt conveyor. It is possible to place it wherever you would like to. It can be also expanded when the mouse pointer is being changed and it can be rotated as well. Next, I'm going to add a box on top of it. And basically that's it. And we can already start the simulation here. At the top, there's start, pause, and reset button. When I press start, we can see that the conveyor is moving. When I reset, it goes back to the starting position. But obviously we would like to connect it somehow with the PLC. And one way of doing it is using the OPC UA server. In our case, we are not going to specifically use the PLC, but we create OPC UA server using Python. When we select the conveyor, on the right hand side, we can see some options. The first one is enable comms, which means that it enables the external communication. And then next, we can see that there is a new tab called TAC, where we can connect the TAC that is going to control the speed of it. And the speed of it is defined at the bottom here. If I change it to two now, then it's going to move to the other direction. Okay. Let's go to the main. And here in the root, we can see the protocols that are being supported. We are going to use OPC UA and we have to define the endpoint where it's connecting to. Next, let's create an OPC UA server using Python. I'm going to minimize it. I will create a new folder called OPC UA server. Inside, I'm going to create a virtual environment for Python. And then as it is creating, let's go to the other repository, which is called OPC UA Asensio, in which basically gives us the possibility of creating the OPC UA server. All you have to do is just use this one comment, which I will copy the virtual environment as been created. I will activate it. 
install the server. And then we need some code to actually create a server. Here is an example available, which is called minimal server example, which I will download now. And you can just start it. And the server is already running on this address. And the value is incrementing. We'll go, go back to this later. But before, let's add an OPC way client that you can actually manipulate the value manually. I will create a new folder, OPC way client we are also going to use the python i will create the virtual environment here and the last repository for today it's called opc ua client gui you might have seen it in my other video it's also really simple to use all you have to do just use the following command to install OPC UA client. I restart the virtual env and install the OPC UA client. Then to start it, all you have to do is OPC UA client and it's already started. The address of the server is as follows. I have the same one here already. It's better to type in localhost because for me personally, the zero, the zero did not work. And then just press connect. You can see that it has connected in the root objects my object my variable this is the variable defined in the server configuration we can see the current value here and the type is double if you refresh it's higher this is because it's constantly increasing this is visible also here as the log from the server these are the this is our connection to the server but here is the value being increased as well. When we open the script of the server, we can see the server endpoint that is defined here. And this is the variable which is being used right now and it's incrementing. Next, what we like to do is control the conveyor using the OPC UA. What is important here is that tag is the float type because otherwise it's not going to work because float type is expected in the simulation. So what we have to do is modi to modify the script a little bit to have the float type specifically. That's why I'm going to change the my variable name to speed. And next, I will define the float type UA variant. I will put the 2.1 speed. Okay, so this is our variable in the float type. Apart from that, we don't need to increase the value. It was only for, as an example, we can delete the increase here. And I will change the new val to current value. I will update it here. So,
current value of p is Apart from that, we don't need to add this method. We can delete this part. Also, we don't need this function here. Okay, let's start the script again. Clear it. The new var is not defined. I didn't get rid of this line. We also don't need this one. Let's try again. It's running. It says the current speed is 2.10. Let's connect again to our server. I have made a typo here, should be speed. There's speed. You can see that this is the flow type now, which is important. And if we change the value here, as an example, 3.5, refresh. You can also see here that the speed is 3.5. Okay, let's configure now the endpoint in our simulation. I'm going to copy the server endpoint, go here and just paste it here. That's it. And now for the conveyor, we have to de put the tag address and the tag address is essentially the node ID. You can just copy here and paste it here, press enter. Here at the bottom, there's an output tab, which we could be helpful. It says what we have done actually. So when I set the tag here, I pressed enter, it updated. Also, the endpoint has updated. Let's try starting it. So it moves to the right. The speed has updated to 3.5, which is correct because that's our current speed. If we change it to minus two, it should move to the other direction now. I press start and it moves to the other direction. It means that the communication works. I will put zero, reset and start and it doesn't move. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what do you think about this simulation in the comments and see you next time. Bye bye.